I didn't understand that my purpose was allowed to evolve. I need to honor the shift that is calling me. And when I did, Lindsay, it was the best thing. The relationships that you're calling in now, friendship and otherwise, it's just different because you're clear yeah. about the values. Your intuition is never going to steer you away from your values. Because you just are who you are and you know who you are and you're moving in accordance with that. We like to state values and then not live by them. Mm -hmm. So we like to say, oh, my family is my top priority, but your calendar doesn't reflect that. I look for the misalignment. And the thing that I've learned most recently is do something about it. What's your experience of yourself now? Oh, girl, I love me. Oh, mm -hmm. my gosh. Same. <laughs> I love me so much. Girl, it's breathtaking. I didn't know that I could love myself like this. Patrice Washington, welcome back to the Powerhouse <laughs> Women podcast. Thanks, Ren. I guess we should maybe tell the viewers why we're in hotel robes. Because you asked me to put one on. <laughs> and I told you, I don't get undressed for just for anyone, Lindsay. But because I love you. <laughs> but because I love you. <laughs> so this is so fun. We're, ha we happen to be in the same city. Yeah. And this is one of those moments where you just kind of, you take the opportunity when you have it, especially because mm -hmm. we are overdue to catch up. So yeah. why not make content out of it? Because you really are, not only are you one of my favorite podcast guests, and I'm not just saying this to be nice, I just got to see you on stage and you're one of my favorite speakers of all time. You get better every single time I see you. You say that every time. But then you keep getting better, so I'm not <laughs> lying. I'm a woman of my word. I think I keep getting more authentic. Yeah. And I think that's what resonates with people mm -hmm. is just that, owning more and more of my truth and being unapologetic about what other people think about it. Yeah. Yeah. So we're literally recording this at like 7 p.m. after an event. And I was like, let's just throw on the hotel, fancy hotel robes and really give people like, this is the kind of conversation we'd probably be having over a glass of wine after True. an event anyway. Yes. So, okay, you were in my business when you were on stage. Let me tell you why. Yes. You were talking about this analogy of the boulder. Mm-hmm that comes after the rock and the pebble. Mm -hmm. And these these signs we get that if we don't listen to them, if we don't obey mm -hmm. that call to pivot, to make a decision, to do whatever it is, it just gets more and more uncomfortable. Yeah. So rude, first of all. <laughs> I was rude. You were, well, you're just in my business making <laughs> me. That's my job. But. I have actually been in a season where I'm starting to listen to those things a lot yeah. sooner because you, you shared some really powerful examples about that. So for anyone who wasn't there, mm -hmm. take us back to just where you sort of learned the hard way about this, this theory. So I was talking about when you're in the season of awakening, this means that life is always trying to get your attention. Life is speaking to you. And oftentimes we're waiting for life to yell at us and it actually just starts in a whisper. And so for myself, after losing everything in 2008, 2009 during the recession, rebuilding this career as America's money maven, and really having all the things that I prayed for, you know, I'm on national television, you know, often I'm on national radio, I'm being featured everywhere, I'm speaking all the time, and yet there's this still small voice that says, there's more, there's more. And I couldn't slow down enough to really lean into it and try to figure out what that actually meant for me. So I did what most of us do. I just shook it off and I kept going. Mm. And then I'm on the Dr. Oz show one day and I had the pebble and the pebble was just this moment where I'm on there, you know, and they're asking me to move a felt piece of broccoli and apple from one like board to the next. And they're like, because we really want to help the people. And I'm like, with all due respect, I don't believe that this is the truth about wealth. I'm saying this to myself. Yeah. And I'm like, when I got delivered from that bathroom floor and had the opportunity to rebuild my life brick by brick, right? It was not because I was saving on groceries. There were a lot of other things that I had to do. And I felt like in this season of your life, you have a responsibility to share those things. But if you keep saying yes, just because these invitations are nice, the good things, and you're saying no to what you were truly been mandated to do, which are the God things, you're gonna continue to feel out of alignment. 
And so that pebble, that whisper happened that day on the Dr. Oz show. But I was like, eh, I'm too busy. <laughs> I have so much going on. I have to fulfill all these other requests that have come in for me to do things. I'll get to it. And then The Rock. The Rock came when I had another company trying to get me to dismiss my trademark. They were petitioning to have my trademark basically revoked. And my attorney is like, after, you know, months of back and forth, she's like, are you sure there's not something else that you can do? And I say that was the rock because it was a super hard season. I'm putting out all this money trying to defend myself, but I was a little guy, right? Trying to defend myself against a big company. And it could have gone on and on and on if I didn't surrender. But I didn't surrender right away. Mm. I didn't surrender. It took the boulder, which was my site being hacked. To this day, I couldn't tell you who did it or why they did it. But my site was hacked and everything that I had created under my original brand, which was Real Money Answers, was lost. I woke up one morning in the middle of a launch expecting to see uh, Stripe notifications and PayPal notifications. And instead I saw DMs and messages from people saying, hey, what's going on with your site? What's wrong? And then coming to find out that everything that I had built was just lost. It was gone. There was no recovering. I had a shell of a site. Yeah. And that was the boulder. But oftentimes I feel like we wait until it is catastrophic to make a change. But really, your life has been signaling to you, you should do something different. Is, is it time to explore something else? Are you know, are you trying to keep yourself in a season that has expired because it's comfortable or because people applaud you for it or because you feel like this is the only way that you can earn respect or love or validation or whatever it is you've attached to that thing? And I just from that time, you know, finally accepting I was disobedient for quite a while there and finally accepting, OK, I need to honor the shift that is calling me. And when I did, Lindsay, it was the best thing. I mean, I only know you because I made the shift, right? I only know, you know, a lot of the girlfriends that we share in common because I made the shift. And when I did, was it uncomfortable? And was I releasing what I had known? Yes, I was. But the beauty of what actually happened in the unknown has been such a miraculous journey that I wouldn't trade for anything. I'm grateful for the boulder, but I don't want a boulder every time it's, you know, my time to do something different. Mm. And that's what you like really highlighted for all of us was just that it doesn't have to get to that moment. But mm. I want to go back because you've been on the podcast a few times. You, mm -hmm. You've spoken at the Powerhouse Women event. Yeah. So a lot of people know your story of this powerful bathroom moment where you were at rock bottom in a lot of ways rebuilt. So this was after you had rebuilt this really successful career. Yeah. And I think that's the part that's it's easy to imagine that rock bottom moment where everything is stripped away. Well, of course, you have to make a different decision. Mm. But talk about like the unique nuance of you were at a career high. You yeah. were on TV. Yeah. You had all these opportunities. How much harder was it at that point? Is that part of why you resisted, do you think? Yeah, because I was in the comfortability of the accolades. I think like many of us, we get comfortable with the applause, right? And people will applaud what appears to be success, even when it feels misaligned and inauthentic to you. And that's the thing, you know, I really do value authenticity. And so being able to just keep asking myself, like, do you really want to be a public success and a private failure? Like, is it okay that people are excited about what you're doing, but you no longer feel excited? Even though you feel like your life is in service to others, at the end of the day, you still have to be served by this. You cannot become a prisoner to purpose. And sometimes when we don't understand, and for me in that season, I didn't understand that my purpose was allowed to evolve. It felt like once you kind of figure out the thing you've been called to do, you're like, okay, I just have to do that thing. But really, it's designed to evolve because we're never the same people. I'm not who I was yesterday, right? You are always exposed to new ideas, new thoughts, new perspectives. You're being stretched in so many different ways. And to think that you're supposed to be the same and do the thing the same way, you might have the same call, but it's you're being called to express it in a different way. And there's nothing wrong with going in and out, you know, of what that looks like for you, as long as it's aligned in that season. 
up until that point, I really hadn't had that conversation with anyone that it was okay for my purpose to expand and evolve and that it should, because, you know, I say this all the time, our businesses and our purpose will only grow to the extent we're willing to heal. I was doing a lot of work in my personal life. So it would make sense that my business life needed to evolve to catch up to the work that I was doing. Yeah. Right. Because the more we clear the clutter and the more we deal with childhood trauma and limiting beliefs and we're just doing all of that work, of course, it's going to inform Mm -hmm. how we move about the world and navigate our purpose. We shouldn't expect to grow personally and then force ourselves to stay the same professionally. That's incongruent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so simple to say it on the other side of the lesson. Mm -hmm. But I want someone listening to hear that maybe you're at the pebble stage. Yeah. And it doesn't have to escalate. So you were talking a little bit about intuition and just Mm -hmm. that when when we talk about things like intuition alignment, I think so for me, earlier in my journey, I wasn't even clear what that felt like, how Mm. to access it. So what has helped you get really, really clear to listen, to hear it when it's at the whisper? stage when it's at the pebble stage. Oh, that's so good. Okay. One of the first things I would say is defining my own values. I think defining your own values is so critical because it's so easy to get sucked up in the noise of all the things. We have access to so much at our fingertips, right? So you're hearing all the podcasts, you're reading all the books, you're watching all the YouTube videos, you are doing all the things, you're going to all the events. And it's okay to hear all these things, but you still have to be able to filter it for yourself, right? Through the lens of your own values. So I've learned that I can hear amazing information and receive amazing advice. And I still have the right to reject any advice that's not in alignment with what I feel assigned to do. How do I know? Because I have to be clear about my own values. What are the things that really matter to me? And so that's one way to kind of know because your intuition is never gonna steer you away from your values. A lot of information gathering will, a lot of looking to the left and looking to the right and comparing yourself to others will, a lot of trying to keep up with what's popular in culture and not really in tune with your own purpose will, right? And so that's when we usually find ourselves becoming misaligned. We're not aligned with our own values. Like at the core, we like to state values and then not live by them. Mm. So we like to say, oh, my my family is my top priority, but your calendar doesn't reflect that, right? Oh, my health is my top priority. Uh, the fact that you don't sleep and you drink Dr. Pepper all day, 24-7, and no shade to Dr. Pepper, but it is what it is, right? Like, that's that's out of alignment, right? It's hard to hear what I refer to as that still small voice, right, that is whispering at the pebble stage when you are so cluttered with doing things out of alignment with your values anyway, but also thinking that you have to prioritize other people's information Mm -hmm. over what you genuinely feel. Yeah. And I think that as women, we have been trained and groomed to dismiss our own feelings. We have been told, well, well, feelings ain't facts. And so we will put other people's facts that can be manufactured in any way you can choose any study or research or survey you're always going to find something that proves whatever the author of that study wants Mm -hmm. to prove just is what it is and so we will turn around though and say well they must know better because whatever insert whatever thing you know that you're Mm -hmm. glorifying as opposed to just acknowledging that your feelings have merit what feels right to you has merit um, a lot of the decisions that I've made in my business have been very spirit led. When you you talk about illogical, purpose is so illogical. Like it is illogical for us to be in this hotel room right now. If you told me this morning that I would take <laughs> my little outfit off and put on a robe to come record a podcast. I didn't even know you were here earlier. Right. So, I, you know, but I'm going with the spirit like, yeah, my girl is here. Like, let's do the thing. Right. I say that because. If I had an attachment to whatever else is going on this evening, then I would miss the blessing, right, of where this day has led me, which is to spend time with my friend, right? And also be able to create a conversation that will hopefully be a blessing to others. And so I just say that to come back to that idea of being able to just, you know, 
sisterhood is one of my core values. Like I love relationship with women. Like I grew up in a, a time when people were like, oh, I don't do girls. I don't do women. I don't have female friends. And I was one of those people years ago. So if I say that I value that now, then it makes sense to move in this direction, right? Mm -hmm. I look at all the decisions I make now from that lens. Like, what do yeah. I say I value? If I say that I value simplicity, I'm not going to engage in things that just seem like people are making it too complicated. Mm. Once you make it complicated, I'm out. I like a simple life, please. Mm -hmm. I, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. I like to prioritize peace. So then I have to ask myself, even with what I say yes and no to in my business, if by saying yes to this, I am stripping myself of peace, is that really a good thing? Is it a God thing? Like, yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I, and so I move with that intention. Mm. You really are just one of the most grounded people that I know. It's one of the reasons I love to be around you because I feel that in your energy mm. and that I've never heard you articulate it in that way. And that's probably why, because you just are who you are and you know who you are and you're moving in accordance with that, in integrity with it. Yeah, I do my best to, but I'll say, you know, at Redefining Wealth, we live by the pillars, right? Mm -hmm. One of the ways that I've become more and more grounded, Lynn, I was saying these last few years in particular, as I've gone through so much transition, is to go through the pillars, the six pillars of wealth, one by one, and you can link to it so mm -hmm. people can get mm -hmm. to it. But I go through it one by one, and I ask myself this question, am I being radically honest about what's serving me, or am I still on autopilot? And what I mean by that is, you know, you're going to change. Like I said, you're always growing and evolving. So fit pillar is the first one, right? So it's about becoming your best self and being uh, fit both physically and mentally. And so when I think about what I'm saying is the vision on my heart in this season, like what is the dream that I have? I look at my life in this moment, not, oh, what it used to be, what I hope it to be in this moment. If I'm being radically honest, is there somewhere where I'm romanticizing something that is not serving what yes. I say I want? And I said on stage today, a lot of times we don't want to ask ourselves a question because then we'll have to take responsibility for the consequence. Because once you know and give voice to it, you can't unknow it. There's no going back. You can ignore doing anything pebble rock boulder, right? You can be disobedient and say, I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm just going to sit here. That's your option. That is an option I've chosen many times, you know, knowingly and unknowingly. But what I've learned to do now is, let's say fifth pillar. I came to a place earlier this year where I was like, if I'm being radically honest, I'm romanticizing my relationship with my current therapist. Mm. Like she supported me for almost three years and God bless her. So grateful. But the season that I'm in is I transition, you know, out of a long term marriage and relationship into a new phase where I want to date and experience love in a different way. If I'm honest, just because we've known each other all this time, I don't think she can serve me into that. Yeah. So a lot of us as women, oftentimes we'll stay in things longer because we're like, I don't want her to be mad. I don't want to hurt her feelings. I don't want to make her feel like she's not valued. We create all these stories and it's like, in order for me to step into my next level and dimension of purpose, I need actual support. I'm not willing to pay two therapists to pretend. <laughs> just to like, avoid just hurting to avoid someone's feelings. Conflict, right? Yeah. And it was just one of those things where I'm like, if I'm radically honest, she's not serving me anymore. Mm -hmm. And I have to let her know that and release so I can go get what I need in order to step into this dream and vision that I have. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, when you say you experience me as grounded, I think the honest thing is I'm just always in that loop of like, OK, when I experience a frustration, it's time to take inventory. Where am I not showing up radically honest? Because then that means something is misaligned and I go through the pillars and I look for the misalignment. And the thing that I've learned most recently is do something about it. Mm -hmm. Knowing is not enough. You have to own it. And you got to mm -hmm. get the guts to do something about it. And I know that it's scary. I know that it's not easy. I do believe it's a muscle you have to build. Yeah. And I believe for myself, as I've built the muscle with little things, it led to me being able to make the decision to dissolve my marriage because the truth is it was not serving me and it was not and I don't want to say it's not serving people oh it's just about you yeah no it I had experienced pebble after pebble rock after rock boulder after boulder mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and I had normalized behavior that was beneath me. Mm -hmm. I had romanticized what I still desired, right? Because sometimes we can pray for something for so long and we're just holding on and holding on and creating a fantasy, fantasizing about what it could be. And the reality is we can't deal with people based on what we hope. We have to deal with them based on what we know. Mm -hmm. And based on what I knew, I knew that it was not God's best for me. Right. Mm -hmm. And boulder after boulder, just like, no, this, this isn't it. God has better for me. But I had to do that by getting clear through these pillars for myself so that I didn't mix up my genuine, like, this is what Patrice desires against what other people think. Mm Because it wasn't about looking for affirmation, validation, or a chorus of consensus. Mm. This is what I know I have to do for me. And it was the best for me. This is what both examples. Yeah. Best things I could have done for yeah. my career and then for my personal life. And that's the part I want you, I want to kind of start to bring this together and talk about you're further on the journey. You've now built that muscle mm-hmm. by doing these things over and over and over again. For someone who's listening to this and is starting to realize that radical honesty point is step one. I want you to speak to how it feels for you, how you feel in your body, how you feel in your business, how you feel in your relationships now, almost to give hope right of what's on the other side of doing some of this some of this work because it's, yeah. it's confronting at first we'll yeah. just call it what it is right you know what's so funny can i tell you where i really started yeah. to build the muscle yeah and this is going to sound so crazy i started to build the muscle in two places the nail salon and when i would get a massage was it because you spoke up yeah. Okay. Yeah. I it was one this. of the first times that it occurred to me. And I'll tell you who really helped me get the lesson down where I realized you're not radically honest in every possible way. And you can't expect yourself to be radically honest in big ways if you won't do it in small ways. This is where I get the idea of building the muscle. Right. I was a mother daughter massage with my daughter, Reagan, and we are um, at like, you know, a local massage place or whatever. And we're right across from each other and the ladies are doing the massage. And I'm thinking to myself that I don't like this pressure. I'm thinking it, but I don't say anything. I'm just like, I don't like this pressure. And I'm waiting for her to ask me. I'm like, when she asks me, because they always do, right? First five minutes or so, they're like, is the pressure good, right? She never asked me. So like, 10 minutes go by and I'm actually uncomfortable. I'm physically uncomfortable and I'm having this conversation in my head back and forth like, oh, I don't like this. Mm -mm." Mm -hmm. I shift a little bit, hoping that she'll kind of like get the hint, but she still doesn't say anything. And then I hear my at the time 12 year old daughter say, "Um, I'm sorry, lighter pressure, please. And she's just like so assertive about it. And I'm like. Why couldn't I do that? Now, my daughter has raised to be, she was raised to be free. I've raised her to use her voice. I've raised her to speak up. It was one of the first times it really dawned on me. I really was not raised to speak up. I was really, like many of us, conditioned to be polite to a fault, to my own detriment. Like, I don't say the things. I'm like, this little girl, I'm almost 40 at the time. And not able to speak up. And that became one of the first practices. Like, when I get a massage... First thing, I'm like, uh, no, thank you so much. Mm-mm, that doesn't feel good. Like it'd be, and it seems silly, but you have to start somewhere. And I was like, do not go back and forth in your head. Just give voice to truth. The truth is you're uncomfortable. You're paying for a service. You're paying for peace. <laughs> like you came here for a peaceful experience. Why are you allowing yourself to sit in frustration? And the same thing at the nail salon. Like if something was off, I would be the person who felt bad being like, um, I'm sorry, you got my French chip a little cricket there. Like, can we just, you know? Yeah. I would just kind of like, uh, uh, and then hope they say, can I fix it? Is something wrong? And or like, oh, well, you know, I'm like, I have to ask myself, where else in your life do you wait for people to give you permission to feel good in your body? Like to feel better about your choice. Where else are you waiting for people to give you permission to speak your truth? It is more comfortable for them to never acknowledge the blunder 
because they don't even want to do the extra work to clean it up. They may see it. And they may hope that you don't see it or that you don't say anything so that they can just move on, right? It's not on anyone else. And I realized how much I was relinquishing my power, how much I was giving power away in all types of little ways. And I'm like, and you wonder why you can't speak up in this? How could you speak up in this when you can't speak up with a stranger for Mm a 45 minute service for an hour long service and you expect to speak up in what way when you spent your life with someone Mm -hmm. like you have to learn and really so you know my separation was two years ago my divorce was a year ago but really the process of working through this and building my own voice and I have to say this too and I had a powerful voice on stage Mm -hmm. may be clear Mm -hmm. right and I think sometimes That's where we get it twisted. We think that because professionally we can show, many of us can show up in one way professionally and not own who we are personally at all. Mm. And I had to come to the fact that God did not give me situational voice. The voice that I have is powerful in every conversation I have. If I meet someone on a, at a bus stop right now, or if I'm on stage in front of hundreds or thousands of people, God did not give me situational voice. He did not give you situational voice. The same power that he gives you to inspire all of the women as you do with powerhouse women is the same voice that when you have to speak up to a family member who's being disrespectful or not honoring boundaries, same voice. We attach all the other story and meaning to it, but he's already endowed us with the same voice. It's up to us to exercise it. Mm. So what's your experience of yourself now? Oh, girl, I love me. Oh, my gosh. Same. I love <laughs> me so much. It, Girl, let me tell you. <laughs> I. It's breathtaking. I didn't know that I could love myself like this. I didn't know that I could find myself so loving and so lovable and so worthy outside of applause. I don't being on stage you know why you think that I'm better and better every time because I care less and less I care about being of service to people but I'm not there to try to get everyone to like me yeah I am okay if I walk up that stage and half the room is like I didn't really like her that's okay because I said what I came to say and the half of the room that received a nugget I was here for them I'm not here for all the people I'm here for the people who are called to my voice and that is is so freeing in so many ways. I can't even tell you, like, I love my life now. I honestly, I love my life. I love what I get to do. I love how I get to do it. I love that I get to say yes to what I want to say yes to. And I have no attachment. I'm not attached to like, why didn't they invite me to the, I don't care. Like I'm literally just whoever I'm called to serve and whatever I'm called to do. I'm excited when I can do it. And other than that, I'm at home minding my business, loving myself, loving God, loving my child and loving my man. That's Mm -hmm. it. I don't have an attachment to another thing. Mm -hmm. And by that, you know, that means I'm dating again. Like, but I'm like, which we're going to. Yeah. Part two. uh, We're going to we're going to wrap this so I can get the realty. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I love it. But even just the the relationships that you're calling in now, friendship and otherwise. Yeah, it's, it's. it's just different because you're clear yeah. about the values. And like you said, showing up in alignment with that. And yeah, I just love you. I adore I you so you. much. I Anyone know. who's willing, I, I literally pulled you aside less than an hour ago and I was like, my team is here and all the equipment. Do you want to go throw on fancy hotel robes and just get to have this conversation? Because yeah. anytime I get to talk with you, it's valuable to me. And so I know it's valuable to everyone else who's listening. Well, so thank, thank you for having me. And I love you. I love you. I love you.